Mike Check 95 along with my usual game. cohorts Orphan Joker and Krieger Margin and we reviewed the movie Jurassic Park. Before we get into our thoughts on the movie, I'd like to go over the uh, ratings and uh, budget and box office this film got. Critics rated this film 9.2 out of 10. Audiences rated this film 9.1 out of 10. The budget of this film was $63 million. The box office they got back was $1.034 billion. This movie came out in 1993. So I will judge this movie based on 1993 judging because there are some moments where I'm like, oh, that's kind of bad CGI, but it's not really that bad. Jurassic Park um, 1 started a franchise that this one movie alone made a billion, billion dollars at least. That's just the, the movie, not talking about all the money that they made from sales and whatnot. Um, so this is one of the ones that, that is formative to my childhood, so I'm, I have a good bias against it. There's a lot of moments in this film that I look fondly upon. Um, I feel like it was done well overall. Animatronics for this time, like if you guys ever look up like the T-Rex that they used and everything, it was like one of the most extensive uses at this time or since then of animatronics in, in movies. And it was iconic and changed people's perspectives on dinosaurs and had a whole genre of shit that that followed from this. Like, this is a multi-billion dollar industry made from one movie where they're like, hey, let's get dinosaurs, bring them back to life, put them in a park. If you're watching this, we're, we're reviewing it because they're making another movie. Yeah. So uh, more money. So we are, yeah, so we this is the, the beginning of us covering the Jurassic Park series overall. So, so for me, this movie was, um, Standpoint wise, what 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 it, what it showed it had a lot of messages to it about humanity versus nature, how we're the top predator, or how we're not actually the top predator. And there's a, there's a lot of like messaging to it at the same time. Um, cast was fantastic. I really like the cast for the most part, other than one female. No, uh, <laughs> I really like the cast for it. The guy who plays Hammond does his role fantastically. Um, I feel like if this this movie might be looked upon different if he wasn't. How it played in his role as well. Anyways, there's very few th bad things I can talk about this movie at all. Um, this is one of the ones that I put at 8, 10 out of 10 because it is uh, formative for my childhood. I think I did the same thing with Term. Did I say the same thing with Terminator 1? You said for Team 1 and T2. Yes, yes. The ones that are formative, that are like instant classics that I will literally remember the rest of my life, they're 10s. This movie qualifies as that watched it a million times so you know I was on my phone the whole time but I can tell you almost every single fucking scene what happened and how many times I've seen this movie. Messaging for this this is a great start for a series. It doesn't really segue into a sequel um, which is the only like cash grab um, yeah they, they cash grab I'm interested to see do you guys know anything about the lead up before this movie came out what was expected of this um, movie? So basically, there were already two books out uh, of of Jurassic Park out before the movie came out. But I can yeah. tell you this right now: the two books are vastly not nothing com like the the movies. They they yeah. they pretty much Changed. childrenized the, the the movies compared yeah. to the books. Because if they went completely by the books, it would probably Bomb. not make it in theaters for kids. Like it'd be rated R or higher. You I would say that. that the people who were like the like very 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 huge diehards when it comes to the series like actually like read the books and everything were probably the very very few people that didn't like this movie because they probably want more from the book than um, the movie because basically um, this movie is like about I think it's the I don't know like I'd have to go back and remember again but I know this movie is either half of book one or it's like parts of book one with parts of book two because there's a lot in book two they don't put in, in the series at all which I'm kind of disappointed because there's a lot of cool things that I looked up in the book series that would be cool in the in the movies but they just mm. haven't done it yet I like this movie this is also for me a you know a childhood classic watching it now uh, having a you know having some science under my belt do, 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 science time with Josh. We're not going to talk about the science here. Yeah, because uh, we talked about I've it during the movie. Collegiate level uh, genetics class from a, a doctor who got his doctorate in genetics. Just wrote a paper on why we can't bring the mammoth back. 
because of genetics. And the reason why he's saying just to look at us because if you actually went into detail about it and we know how Joe gets, this video will turn to it turned about a two hour video. So, yeah, the science. It's, and then like Krieger. It just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. Two hours um, of Josh talking while Krieger takes a nap. The music soundtrack is epic, always has been. Uh, I mean, CGI, you know, nowadays not so good, but back then, I didn't know. I thought it was the best thing. Like, the best thing to slight spread. And the, the animatronics, like, super highly technologically advanced, really cool. You know, even sitting on my couch at home, I felt like I was I was in the Jurassic Park. Uh, super big. The story's know. great. Acting is fantastic. I don't think there's a single awkward line that, you know, most of the lines are quotable. Most people quote them. As we mentioned before, well, there's not the review, there's, but so many memes came from this. There's not any awkward lines that were like, "Oh, that's not supposed to be there." There were yeah, awkward they were, lines. They were, on but they were on purpose. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, for its time, you know, the, the CGI was much better than a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. Like RoboCop Three came out <laughs> in the same year. <laughs> RoboCop Three uh, shouldn't be talked about. The same year. Uh -huh. Same year. I was just looking at uh, Jason G Goes to Hell came out in the same oh, year. Oh, so bad. <laughs> so <laughs> check out check out our review for Jason Goes to Hell somewhere up here. Yeah, you get, um, to, you get to watch me yell at them for about 20 minutes, tell them how bad it is, but let's continue on. On the, the Orphan Joker normal scale, I've watched this movie so much um, that I don't... It, it, I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 if I was going by my normal scale, which is how I feel. But I feel crappy today, so I'm going to go by... The new and improved Orphan Joker crappy scale and say so it gets a 10 out of 10 just because it's... Oh, it's so good. It's definitely a solid movie. The cinematography is great. Acting's great. Soundtrack's fantastic. Story's great. Um, none of it breaks down unless you're... You know, back at the time, the science of this was fairly, like, logical. Well, other than making dinosaurs an addict frog DNA. But the, like... The shape of dinosaurs, whether dinosaurs had a sound or not. That was, you know, I would say all stuff even, that we say is false now. I would but say even they the didn't whole know frog DNA then. part was like not that knowledgeable back then either. Yeah. It was more recent that that stuff started coming out. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, writing a paper on uh, mammoths bring mammoths back. People still think we can bring mammoths back. There's lots of papers out there about it. It can't happen um, for multiple reasons. Well, I think this is another one of those. No, what I mean is published papers aren't always peer reviewed, and if they are peer reviewed, that doesn't mean that that person who reviewed it sought out other information too you can easily publish a paper that is instruct in contradiction to other papers it's welcome to science i think this is another example of um, a movie that's fun to watch if you don't pay attention too much mm -hmm. it's really fun to watch if you don't think about the exact sciences of how this actually works like how every reason was, oh. i think if it was possible to mm -hmm. happen people would have done it by now so they had to have some kind of sci-fi sci wumbo-jumbo bullshit to put into it. But they wanted to keep it as realistic as possible, so they just had something that if you show to kids, which is going to be a big de demographic mm -hmm. of people watching this film, because they did not cuss for a reason throughout the majority of this film. They did it so kids yeah, Samuel would watch Jackson, it. I don't want to fuck us, man. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's a shame. And this isn't fiction. This, isn't, this is science fiction. Oh. <laughs> I was about to say... <laughs> I was about to say, because when I was Googling the numbers for this no, movie, there's a frequently asked question on Google where someone was asking if this movie is based off a true story. First off, I want to say this this time watching this film was kind of difficult to watch because I was trying to refresh my memory and watch this movie and actually listen to the dialogue and the story, but it was very difficult to do that with my cohorts here talking about science, about 95% of the movie, which is why I was visibly irritated. But it's we're not review. going to talk about The science that. is very interesting. You should have watched it. You should have done childhood. it during the review is what I'm saying. But anyways, moving on, I'm not starting a debate. When I first saw this film as a kid, this film actually terrified me. And I didn't watch it for about 15 years. Oh, seriously? I don't know. And this film scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Korea, Man, I, was I, Hill. This movie. I watched it when I was three, okay? Oh, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. And I was I was absolutely like said, terrified. Goo, 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 gaga. Like I goo, don't, goo, goo, like, gaga. like you can actually ask my mother on this and my grandfather. They both can remember me going to the mall one day and like picking up some like toys or whatever. And there was like this really cool remote control, like actually like moving part, like Tyrannosaurus Rex that they bought. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. For some fucking reason, on the way back from the mall, I'd fallen asleep and we stopped to get gas or get food or whatever, and it's like 10 o'clock at night. 
my little brain forgot we got the dinosaur. <laughs> so they parked the car wherever they're at. I wake up from my nap. Something in the car triggered the T-Rex in the back seat to go off. And the first thing I hear is the T-Rex roaring. And I just start bawling and crying my eyes out because it's just, I don't know why. Because that movie, in that moment in my life, I did not watch Jurassic Park for a very long time. I do not know why. Years later, I watched it again. I actually ended up watching, I think I saw two, three, Jurassic, Jurassic World a thousand times and whatnot. Because I worked at a theater when that movie came out. And eventually I went back and decided to watch Jurassic Park again. And... I was just like, oh, so that's how everything actually started because I've seen everything else that's happened after it, but I didn't remember how it all started because of that childhood trauma. Yeah. But now that I have been more in depth of the knowledge of this franchise and like everything about it, the movies, the books, the science behind the actual dinosaur shit and whatnot, I feel like that they, I know they did this film PG-13 to get more kids to watch it with their parents. But I, honestly, you should have watched the three then. There was there, like there was actually a couple good. There was actually a couple things in the books that I remember like reading up online and like little like videos and whatnot that would have been so cool in the movie to see. But I get it why they couldn't do it because you know you can't really show a bunch of fucking raptors eviscerating a child on screen or a bunch of compies. So <laughs> um, Mike, Mike terrified by regular T Rex. Wishes it had violent child ripping apart by said that's 15, dinosaurs. That's 15, so, 20 years apart. So, <laughs> so this is actually a good, a, a good thing. Um, I was reading up on some of the trivia because there's a lot of interesting things behind this. Um, so the guy who played John Hammond, uh, Michael Christian Totem, I can't pronounce his last name, um, wanted his character. He played the character in it with the intent to be a dark Walt Disney. With the theme park thing, just imagine an evil. Oh, so wait, wait, wait! My brain just clicked. The the guy who played Hammond is, is the guy who wrote the books, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he wanted it to be dark. Because that's that's pretty much what it was and whatnot. But he studio like, he studio like, Garden like, turned ah, into a PG thirteen ah, thing. Ah, um, a I, happy one though. So I well, Disney was pretty dark. Another thing about um, Hammond's character and everything is the way his character, like how it ended for him in the movie and how it ended for him in the book was completely different. In the movie, he obviously gets in the helicopter, flies away and survives to live another day. In the book, they, there's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of like volcanic activity going on because there's a volcano on the island in the book and it just starts going off, interrupting and everything and he vows to stay behind with his creation and dies with it. Universal Pictures actually paid uh, the the writer who plays the old man, um, two million dollars for the rights of his novel before the novel was even published. I do know a goof that you guys probably don't know about. What's that? So the seat, the kitchen scene, when af I, after the raptor opens the door and you see the door swing open, the raptor standing there like looking around and stuff. If you look very close to the, like the raptor's like tail end, mm -hmm. you can see a hand of trying to push it in. Also, the the guy who wrote the book uh, estimated that this movie had approximately. 10 to 20 percent of the novel's actual content yes that is that is actually true because there's a lot a lot in the book that, that, that there's a lot in the book that that well the, basically in the entire series they've taken bits of in the books and put them in each movie but it's just like okay we can't put the actual cool part in the book one of the books that i want to see the movie opened on fr uh, friday june 11th 1993 and broke box office records in this first weekend with 47 million dollars Eventually went on to make more than nine hundred million dollars of worldwide. I think my I think the reason why I'm not wanting to put this film at a perfect ten is because of as I've gotten older and I've like educated myself on everything about this series that I know right now, and the things I know that happened in the book, which I'm not. It was I'm not. I'm, I'm not one of those people that say the book's better than the fucking movie because I actually haven't read. The book in its entirety i just know a lot of the cool parts that i that i'm like oh, i wish that was in it but it's writer approved i mean yes but okay. i i th there there's there's some bits in the book i want to see in the movie but i understand it, that it's never going to happen or it could still happen because we have another film coming out this year but i'm going to go with a 9.95 <laughs> 
because... So what you're saying is we need to have a book review Travis before the new movie comes out. Do you know how long this is going to take? <laughs> the 9.95 may sound a little picky. It's, I mean, that's just how my... That, that's just the rating I'm picking in my head. Again, I'm not saying this movie's bad at all. I, I love this movie. I do have tra traumatic experiences with this movie, too. But, like I said, just teeny tiny little bits in the film that I wish were in the film, and that's it. This movie is Steven Spielberg's most successful movie. We made a lot of money. I mean, I mean yeah. Which is funny. It made a billion dollars. It's weird, because when you think of Spielberg movies, you don't think of Jurassic Park. Oh, another, another uh, fun fact I learned, I learned about while we looked this stuff up. The part where... The Rex breaks through the roof of the car and on top of the kids. That wasn't actually supposed to happen. Oh, the the roof the was glass wasn't the, well, glass wasn't supposed to do that. It was supposed to be like it hitting just hitting the top of the, the the car. The animatronic had a bit more power than they thought, and it broke the panel. And the actual fear you oh. see on the movie from the kids is actual fucking fear. Well, that's so, such a, see, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say there's no way a T Rex couldn't just like squish those kids. But just that's, the fact that that's that was, like that was a down downturn in this movie. Was, just the fact that, did, that that's natural fear though. It's just like oh my god. The, the idea that the the, the, the the dinosaurs in here like giant brachiosaurus. Oh, we just we can just pull its head over. You know, a T Rex. Oh, we can just stop it by pushing it up with our fingers. You know, oh raptors. Oh, we can stop them from pushing down the door by just like leaning up against it. No, no, no. No. James Cameron said in an interview that he wanted to do a movie of Arnold Schwarzenegger as Grant, B Bill Paxton as Malcolm, and, and uh, Charlton Heston as Hammond. At this point, we're just doing a podcast, guys. <laughs> How do you guys feel about the beginning of this series? Yeah, put it in the comments if you're still here at the, the end of our podcast. <laughs> here at this fucking point when these two are fucking rambling or pissing me off. There's no way we hit there's no way we have time for this. If the experience of the second film is exactly going to be like this film, I'm just going to say my my number and then just stay quiet. Michael, listen. This is Mike Check ninety five with my cohorts Orphan Joker and Krieger Margin One and we're Orphan Joker. Out. Uh Mike, you know it's better to be pissed off than on, right? You you referenced a movie that you haven't seen. What? Rabbit Hood Mini Tights. Never mind. Psych check. Mic check. Enough, Robin Hood Men and Tights came out in 93 as well. Ah, it was fantastic. I love that movie. It's I, like the, I like the other Robin Hood better, though. The one with Mel Gibson? I mean, not Mel Gibson. Oh, I know who you are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah.